Hey, this is Joe again, and today I want to talk about three tips that I have for Final Cut Pro. So yeah, I use Final Cut Pro. I know a lot of people want to know why I use Final Cut over Premiere. And for me, it's just because I use a Mac and it tends to render faster and I'm used to it. So that's it. Nothing against Premiere. I think they're both awesome, whatever works for you. So here are the three tips. So the first tip that I have is to use a plugin called Neat Video and it's for noise reduction. So a lot of times you'll go out and you'll shoot some video, maybe in low light, and you'll notice you'll get back and you're like, man, it's a little bit, it's a little bit noisy. It's a little bit noisy and it kind of doesn't look as clean as you'd want. You can take that video, put it into Final Cut Pro and use Neat Video and it'll clean up that noise. It does take a while, but what I've noticed is that the results are very pleasing. It stays sharp and it doesn't look all mushy like you'd expect with a lot of different noise reduction algorithms. The next tip I have is to use a plugin called Color Finale by Color Grading Central. I really like this because it allows me to color correct and add a grade if I want to. So I know the new Final Cut Pro 10.4 has the ability to do color correction, but I'm just used to Color Finale. I like that you can use LUTs. I know 10.4 can do that as well, but there's a lot more that you can do with Color Finale that you can't do necessarily. There's a lot more that you can, there's a lot more. There's a lot more that you can, there's a lot. <laughs> there's actually a lot more that you can do with Color Finale stuff that you can't necessarily do with Final Cut Pro by itself. Speaking of LUTs, I like to use a few LUTs from rawpresets.com. There's one called the Ari look, which kind of gives you the look of an Ari Alexa. No, 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 no preset or LUT is gonna give you the exact look of an Ari, but it gives me part of the way there. Another one is MLUX Pro, which emulates the look of a Leica. Another one called Triax, which gives me a cool black and white, very contrasty look. And it's better than what I've found as far as the built-in stuff from Final Cut Pro 10. For you GH4 and GH5 users, I recommend a free LUT by Gnome Kroll. I'll leave a link in the description. So I like to shoot in Cine D, and what it allows me to do is take that footage that I recorded and apply this LUT and it makes it look awesome just using that LUT. Nothing else I have to do. So it's a quick and dirty way to get a good look if you're recording in the Cine D profile. So my last and final tip is to use a color checker passport video. Not the regular color checker passport, which is this one. This one's for photography. It's this one right here, the passport for video. And the reason why this one is useful for video specifically, so it has a different set of chips than the other one. Um, these here are for your deep blacks. So you'd wanna set your histogram so that doesn't go below that. You don't wanna clip your blacks. This is for your mid tones, around 40 IRE. And um, you wanna set that to around 40. Uh, and this right here, what I like to do is I like to set my zebras to 90% and make sure that that is not activating those lines. So I don't want my highlights blown out. If this is not blown out, then I know that my highlights are not gonna be blown out as well. Unless there's something extremely bright in the background. So these chips right here help me get the perfect color. What? Same as the other one. These chips right here? These chips right here? It's the same thing. It's like I already every, used that one. Every video you're gonna have the same. These for gaming, these chips right here? Right here, these chips? These chips right here? These help me get the right colors, if there's some skew in the yellows, reds, magentas, blues, teals, or greens, I can adjust that and make it perfect. These are your skin tones, which you wanna align with the skin tone line. On this side, you have a way for you to be able to focus easily. So a lot of times I'm doing this by myself and it's hard, to, hard for me to figure out if I'm in focus or not. So with this, I'm able to use focus peaking and it's really obvious whether I'm gonna be in focus or not. So over here you have your gray card and you can use that to set your white balance. What I've found is that it's much easier to set your white balance correctly at first rather than to try to correct it later on. So make sure to do that first. So that's it. Anyway, I hope you found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Take care, bye-bye.